Number 8. Lindsay Buziak Canadian real estate agent Lindsay Buziak was contacted in late January of 2008 by a woman looking to buy a million-dollar home in Saanich, a suburb of Victoria, Canada. 24-year-old Buziak was unnerved by the conversation because the prospective client had called her personal cell phone with a deal that arguably outmatched her position as a junior employee. She nevertheless agreed to meet the client at a Saanich cul-de-sac. Buziak's boyfriend, Jason Zalo, offered to wait outside the property in his car in case anything went wrong. The client had told her she'd come alone, but at 5.30 p.m., a couple arrived at the showing. Witnesses described them as a six-foot-tall Caucasian man with dark hair and a blonde-haired woman aged between 35 and 45, wearing a distinctively patterned dress. Buziak shook their hands with her body language reportedly indicating they'd never met before. The three entered the home. Zalo and a colleague he'd picked up arrived at the property at around 5.40 p.m. and later described seeing the figure through the mottled glass of the front door. After about 20 minutes, he texted Buziak, asking if she was all right but got no reply. Zalo and his colleague then approached the house and the former called 911 upon finding the front door locked and receiving no answer to his knocking. His colleague discovered the patio door was open and they entered the house. In the master bedroom upstairs, Zalo found Buziak lying on the floor in a pool of her own blood after she'd been stabbed multiple times. She was pronounced dead when paramedics arrived. It would later emerge that the female client to whom she'd talked on the phone, whose accent Buziak had found odd, had given her a fake name. The phone used by the caller had been purchased in Vancouver a few months prior and only used for the call to Buziak. There were no defensive wounds on the victim's body suggesting she'd been stabbed from behind and had no idea of what was about to happen. There was a complete lack of fingerprints, DNA material or physical evidence at the scene, a potential sign that the perpetrator knew what they were doing and had killed before. Buziak wasn't robbed or abused, leading investigators to conclude she'd been specifically targeted, likely by someone close to her. Zalo fully cooperated with investigators, passed the polygraph and was never named as a suspect. The murder, an enduring mystery in Canadian law enforcement, remains unsolved. Number 7. Sarah Walker On July the 8th of 2006, a couple visiting a model home in McKinney, Texas, found the brutalized body of 40-year-old real estate agent Sarah Walker. Law enforcement examined the crime scene and determined that the woman had been beaten, bitten on the neck and stabbed at least 33 times, with 10 of the strikes being fatal. Additionally, her watch and ring were missing from her body. Bloody fingerprints were found at the scene as well as DNA material under the victim's fingernails. The evidence connected 27-year-old Kosol Chantha Komain to the killing and he was arrested roughly two months later. At the time of his apprehension, Chantha Komain faced a parole violation warrant out of North Carolina where he had been convicted of an unrelated case of aggravated kidnapping and robbery. At his trial, forensic experts argued that in addition to the DNA evidence, the bite mark on Walker's body also matched Chanta Kamein. As part of his defense, the man explained that he went to the model house after his car had broken down and that the bloody fingerprints stemmed from unrelated cuts that he'd had on his hands. His story was found to have lacked credibility and it only took a jury a few hours to find him guilty of the murder in 2007. He was sentenced to death and updates on the matter indicate that his execution date has been set for August of 2022. Number 6. Monique Bohr In July of 2021, two men were sentenced to life in prison for the murder of a Minnesota real estate agent and for shooting her boyfriend who ultimately survived. On New Year's Eve 2019, Mother of two, Monique Bohr, was kidnapped after she told her partner, a local area rapper named Momo, that she was going to show a house to a prospective client. The men charged with her abduction were Cedric Berry and Berry Davis, both in their early 40s. Bohr had been lured to the house where one of them took the keys to Bohr's home before they bound and placed her in a U-Haul truck. They then drove to her home where at approximately 5.30 p.m., a balaclava-clad Berry shot Momo multiple times before fleeing. The rapper called the emergency services, who subsequently found him on the floor of his bedroom, covered in blood. Present at the scene were his and Bohr's two young children, who were physically unharmed. Momo recovered from the shooting, for which Berry and Davis would subsequently be convicted 
of attempted second-degree murder. It's believed that Bo was still alive at the time of the attempt on Momo's life. The woman was executed about an hour later, and her body was dumped in a Willard Hay section alleyway of Minneapolis. She'd been shot three times, at least once in the face. Investigators said they believe Bo's boyfriend was the main target in connection to a dispute over a record deal. Monique had initially been kidnapped to lead the kidnappers to him. Elsa Segura, 28, was later arrested for luring Monique to the home she was showing under the guise of being a prospective buyer, and the police would not rule out more arrests, claiming up to eight people were involved in the elaborate plot. Number 5. Ashley Auckland On April the 8th of 2011, the body of real estate agent Ashley Auckland was found in the model unit of a townhouse complex in Des Moines, Iowa. Just after 2 p.m., an employee of Rotland Homes, the company contracted with building the complex, heard a commotion inside the model home. They found Auckland, who'd been shot twice on the floor. The 27-year-old real estate agent was rushed to a local hospital, where she later passed away. Over a decade since the shooting, after interviewing hundreds of people and going over close to a thousand leads, the authorities were no closer to identifying a suspect for her murder. 33-year-old Aaron Michael Lewis from Arkansas was investigated as a potential perpetrator in 2014. He'd killed a female realtor near Little Rock and buried her in a shallow grave, but he was ultimately ruled out in connection to Auckland's death. Evidence at the scene was virtually inexistent, and there were no signs of a struggle, indicating that she likely knew her killer. According to the latest updates on the matter, the investigation and tip line were active, with a $150,000 reward in effect for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the individual or individuals responsible for Auckland's murder. Number 4. Beverly Carter Arkansas realtor Beverly Carter disappeared in September of 2014 after telling her husband she was going to show a remote rural property to a married couple looking to relocate in the Cabot area. 50-year-old Carter was never seen alive again. A massive search effort was launched after her husband had traveled to the property and found her Cadillac, but no trace of her. The woman's body was eventually found behind a concrete plant in Cabot, and it was determined she'd been suffocated to death. In late September, the police arrested Aaron Lewis, aged 33, as a prime suspect in the case. He was charged with capital murder, robbery, and kidnapping, but the investigation would reveal he'd had an accomplice. His estranged wife, Crystal Lowry, was arrested the following month. She testified against him in exchange for reduced charges of first-degree murder and kidnapping. In the trials that followed, Lewis admitted that he'd bound and buried Carter but denied killing her. His defense unsuccessfully tried to claim that Carter had willingly met Lowry and Lewis to have an affair with them, while also trying to pin her death on the former. The defense attorney painted the image of a woman going through a midlife crisis, who struggled with real estate sales and marital problems. Her fatal asphyxiation had supposedly occurred in Lewis's absence, purportedly as an accident during consensual intimate acts between her and Lowry. The story didn't hold up in court as it was contradicted by Lowry's testimony, upon which hers and Lewis's convictions would ultimately be based. She claimed that they'd kidnapped Carter with the intention of asking for ransom. The victim was then brought to Lewis's Jacksonville home, bound and kept in the bathroom. The couple eventually decided to forego the ransom plan and get rid of Carter, fearing that she might be able to identify them. While the victim's hands were bound behind her back, they wrapped her head in duct tape and let her suffocate to death. The woman was then put into the ground at the plant where Lewis used to work. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, while Lowry was given a sentence of 30 years. Number 3. Soren Arn Olshegel In October of 2021, a realtor was gunned down at a recently sold property in Virginia by an elderly client who was reportedly dissatisfied with his purchase. 84-year-old Albert Balioni from Alabama had signed a contract to buy the Portsmouth house sight unseen, but then had a change of heart the day after moving in. Balioni wanted to return the house and he was met by 41-year-old real estate agent Soren Arn Olshagel to discuss his grievances. The particularities of their interaction remain unclear, but 911 then received a call from Balioni who told them, I shot my realtor. The police arrived and talked to the octogenarian who was holding a weapon. 
Within a few minutes, officers heard a gunshot and subsequently learned that Baglioni had turned the weapon on himself. Inside, they found the bodies of both men and an investigation was launched following the incident. Today's topic was requested by Esther Cavadia and Bubis7. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. David Stoko. In January of 2019, a real estate agent from Salt Lake City, Utah, was killed by one of the tenants he was trying to evict. 40-year-old David Stoko had rented out an apartment to Manuel Velasquez and Jessica Reese, who also went by the surname Miller in December of the previous year. Problems arose as the pair didn't pay their rent on time and Stoko also suspected that more people were living in the space than agreed upon. The tenants would later claim that they'd felt Stoko had been overstepping his boundaries by entering the property whenever he wanted. The father of four went to the apartment on January the 17th and found Velasquez Reese and a third person named Jessica Hernandez. He told them they had to leave the premises by 6 p.m. What followed has only been reported from the tenants' perspective and it was a version of events challenged by Stoko's family. The trio claimed that the real estate agent kicked the door down, started shouting, and then put Velasquez in a chokehold. During the alleged struggle, the latter grabbed a handgun from the fanny pack he was wearing and fatally shot Stoko at least four times. Reese and Hernandez then unsuccessfully tried to clean up the blood from the crime scene. Stoko was reported missing and his body, partly wrapped in a sheet and blanket, was found in a crawl space in the apartment the following day. The trio was arrested on January the 20th and Velasquez was charged with murder while the women were charged with obstruction of justice. Number 1. Sarah Trost The Sheriff's Office in Palm Beach County, Florida received a call on December the 23rd of 2021 from a man identifying himself as Raymond Reese. The 51-year-old Boca Raton resident told them, can you send an officer to pick me up? I shot somebody. Reese had been angry because of an email his landlady, who'd recently evicted him from a Coral Springs home, had sent him the night before. He drove to his former place of residence as Sarah Trost, a realtor and mother originally from Essex, England, was showing the property to prospective tenants. Shortly after 12.30 p.m., witnesses reported a blue Ford Fusion driven by Reese speed up and crash into the front driver's side tire of Trost's Jeep. Reese then brandished a gun out the window and fired multiple rounds at Trust, believing her to be his former landlady. The realtor suffered gunshot wounds to her left arm and upper chest, to which she succumbed at the scene. After calling 911, Reese was arrested and charged with first degree murder. Thanks for watching. Would you rather buy and live in a house where a gruesome murder had recently taken place or live at the base of the world's most active volcano? Let us know in the comments section below.